Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got another um, SolidWorks model here that I'm gonna sort of model up fairly quickly, um, and I'm just gonna run through it. It's a Proctor model one four eight one toaster, um, and some photos from online. So. Quite a um, airstream kind of camper type aesthetic. Um, one of the people that watches my videos sent sent this to me as a challenge, so uh, I I took it on. I'm kind of a bit quiet with project work at the moment. I'm between projects, so I'm just trying to do a few tutorials and uh, also this was a bit of a personal learning exercise trying to get the the top. Um, pressing as, as smooth as I could. Okay, so what I'll do, because uh, there's quite a lot here, and I only want to make this about 20 minutes, is I'll just roll through the model, and um, I'll also upload the model, and put a link in the description of this video, for anybody that's interested. Okay, so we roll right back to the beginning. Created a uh, couple of footprint sketches. This is based on the actual dimensions I could find of the product. I couldn't find any orthog orthogonal um, or elevation views, so it's all been um, done off perspective photos. Um, so there could be, there's guaranteed to be some variation. Okay, so those footprints are set up off the dimensions I found online, and then I've created a uh, front elevation control sketch, which has. Um, I'm using conics for a change. I'm not using style spines. I'm using conics just to try and control uh, and and make it easy to tweak the the curvature in the corner. Okay, so I've got a conic at the in the um at the top there for the top molding. Ah, uh, not molding, pressing. I'm guessing there's probably a bit of draft, so I've got it one degree off vertical uh, where the two pressings meet. And at the bottom I've got again another conic and uh, one degree of draft there. This underside here is kind of guesswork because of the form it's very hard to, to actually see what's happening in the photos. But um, it, it looks okay. And up here I have a control sketch for the um, toast slot. And then I have a side elevation. Um, again with a conic, another conic, one degree of relief on each of those. Uh, the same step in at the from the widest point to the base of the foot and the end elevation of the toe slot. And I'm going to move through here quickly. So I've created a plane called the belt line which is basically the widest point of the product where the top and the bottom pressings meet. I've added a, another conic there called the belt line control, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a single conic with a row value of 0.5. For those who haven't used conics before, the higher the row value, the, um, the sharper the curvature gets, the lower, the flatter it gets. Um, so there's a curvature graph. And I have the um, conic constrained to a horizontal or vertical line on each end. So when I when when I create a surface, everything be normal to profile and it mirrors over smoothly with no creases. Okay, I've got a foot control sketch. Main surface height, which is just a point. You'll see why I've done this later. And I've put a plane there through that main surface height and I've put another profile at the top. Again, a conic. So this is uh, just a conic with a pierce point relationship with both of my main profiles. Okay, now I've created a, this using a loft. I tried using boundary surface, but I couldn't get a good result. Um, too many wiggles, and and by the way, um, see the zebra stripes? This happens sometimes in SolidWorks. It kind of, it, 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 um, it has an issue and it can't display them correctly. It's like the spherical mapping's gone crazy. So anyway, I'll turn that off, and we'll turn curvature combs on instead. So... I have 
my profiles are the main conics and then I have two profiles the belt line and the main top one here but what I've done is to fill the surface out in the corner here I've added um, increased the uh, the start tangent length and the end tangent length they just filled everything out without having to put another section in I put another section in but the curvature went a bit haywire so this was the cleanest way I could do it okay so now to make to fill in the top hole here we need to make that a four-sided hole so I've created a I've got a trim which is basically one millimeter off the uh, top profile I used to create the surface guide curve sorry right and now in there I've just added a a boundary surface just with two two curves in each direction normal to the center line normal to the other center line center plane um, tangent to the faces I haven't made it curvature continuous um, as with SolidWorks um, if I made that curvature continuous all it will do is force this little wiggle here and that but there will be curvature continuous the rest of it it won't flow across so um, because our input curve is it's a part of a conic it's part of a single curve SolidWorks sort of interprets that and you can end up with a fairly smooth result there we go okay so zebra stripes are working okay now so you can see there even though I've only got a tangent constraint the the, the, the zebras tell me it's sort of flowing quite nicely okay I better hurry up sorry okay knitted that together now I'm going to add the toe slot so there's a sketch and an extrude both using referencing the toe slot on the uh, earlier control sketches I made a boundary surface just to cap the end there which will be planar because if you can right click on it and it allows you to sketch it's just between the two edges knit that together and I'm going to do a mutual trim to cut that out um, and I've added a couple of curvature continuous fillets to tidy that up okay now I'm going to create the base extrude the base um, the ribbed the ribbed pressing at the bottom this is a bit more interesting so I've to divide it equally I've um, come up with a system of equal length lines that are constrained with, uh, within the bottom conic that I created back here in the um, front elevation control and an offset of that same conic so you can see 0.75 that's going to be the, the depth of our um, ribs on the bottom so this is a control the next sketch is the actual ribs um, so you can see what I've done there if I turn on the um, rib divisions each one of these is a style spline degree 2 with three points so a point here a point here and a midpoint and then I've constrained at a coincident uh, relationship between that spline and the the outermost point on each of the um, control rib from the control rib peaks from the uh, previous sketch and then to fully constrain it each of the control polygons has an equal length relationship okay so I decided not to go fully wiggly uh, with this so because it looks in the photos like the biases uh, for the ribs that predominantly going out with a little fillet in the in the um, in the trough so okay and to make this I have added a sweep with um, profile at the bottom and another guide curve so it's run around there I tried to that's just to save me recreating the same sketch here and doing it with a loft okay I've added some draft to the base handle control again this is just using the iometer off the photo so so to create the handle I've then added a, a uh, intersection curve with a plane and added a width so that's the path for my sweep now I'm going to um, sweep the handle across in two sections that's the first and there's the second we go over to the photos um, where's the handle it's a good shot oh, I'll come back to it because sometimes it doesn't like loading that photo for some reason okay and then I've cleaned up the end there with the extrude 
and then I just have a series of uh, mutual trims and some offsets here which brings us magically down to this point here where the clear part on the outside, let's see if that photo is loaded, okay so there's a clear part with an open face underneath and that goes over the black part and you can see the black part through there so I've done that and I've added a 0.1 clearance between the parts so if you were to render this it would, uh, it would look okay and then just added some fillets to soften things off um, and I've capped the back of the black part as you can see with an offset off the, um, the top pressing okay now I've got to mirror some stuff over because there's some asymmetry in here if we go to the there's a photo of the control knob um, okay if you look in here the, the ribs stop where the dial is where the control knob is so now I'm going to create that so I've created a um, like a control sketch in here which runs tangentially off one of these trimmed ribs and back into another trimmed rib I'm going to create a surface in here and now I want to blend in between like these terminate like they've been pressed into place so I've created a series of lofts and boundary surfaces there uh, if you're wondering why I use loft just because I was having problems with um, boundary surface flowing nicely okay and now I've added fillet back through here um, the problem with the fillet was I couldn't get it to terminate nicely in here and even if I did get the fillet to terminate nicely it would come to a point because this crease runs out to tangent here so a fillet will always end up as a uh, in a point which is not it's not aesthetically that great so I, instead I'm going to trim these areas out untrim those ends of those fillets uh, tied it up with delete face and now I've created just some boundary surfaces there tangent on each uh, boundary I haven't bothered with curvature continuous or anything and knitted those together so that's cleaned up the end of all those so now I've got a sketch for the for the, for the knob uh, revolve and another revolve for the flat area where the knob uh, sort of so the pressing comes around and then deflects inwards behind the knob okay trim that so that's a mutual trim and then um, I've added some hide the knob added some uh, curved continuous blends in there now I'm just going to tidy up this end here with the old classic where you just um, create some sketches to trim out all this stuff here split line and then delete face, delete face, uh, fill surface with a tangent so that's all in one feature within the delete face there so delete and fill, tangent fill and select all the faces you want it to delete okay so it's much tidier okay moving on I've uh, got a ruled surface here which is just putting a lip underneath here under the side of the pressing to make it look like a like a thicker part, I'm not going to bother thickening this, this is just completely an exterior model okay now we move on put the end slot in because this handle looks like, this This handle is mobile, the handle on the other end is static so that slot gets cut in again using mutual trims, now I'm mirroring everything over and knitting stuff together added a few colours um, and I'm just going to use some, put some fillets on so full round fillet in each end of the slot to take care of the uh, lozenge form I've thickened the handle here because I'm going to add um, I'll find a better shot of the handle there is a texture on the inside oh here we go so you can see here there's some cuts on the inside so I'm going to add something quickly, it's not exactly like this, it's just representative how you might go about it so I've created a single sketch I'm going to do one cut, pattern them and then mirror it across so I'm going to create a base block here so all my little um, blades that run upwards all belong to the same body just to make things nicer so then I'm just going to pattern those blades across and then I'm going to trim them 
to shape. So I've cut those back. So there's a little bit of an overlap with the with the clear part. And now I'm also trimmed the tops back. Uh, if you look in here, you can see there, I think it was 0.4 or 0.5 above. That's using an offset surface. Oh no, that was using a plane. So an offset plane. There's my thickness, 0.4, and then insert, cut, surface. And now I mirrored those, uh, the tools, the cut, the cut tools across, and insert a combined Boolean subtract. <laughs> okay, so there you can see there's some internal details in there. Uh, it's not exactly like in the photos, but it's all right. Okay, now I'm going to mirror the handle to the other end. There we go. We've got two. Um, going to create the the grip on the knob, which will be a cut extrude and then a radial pattern. So I've added some fillets and everything gets patterned around, like so. Add a few fillets on there, small ones, to tidy things up. Like that. And I'm just going to add a plane in the bottom of the base here. So I can add a fillet there. And last but not least, the body keep. So we'll just get rid of any um any construction geometry we don't really need. Okay, so there's the Proctor model 1481 model. Um yeah, so probably how long and probably spent six hours on this in total. Um most of the time was experimenting with um getting a, the best form for the for the top pressing but generally fairly happy with it oh uh, wow see if I can turn zebra stripes on now it might not like this okay so form wise it's pretty smooth um, obviously the conics are tangent uh, to the midline because the curvature of the conic gets mirrored across it's the same curvature on each side so the curvature continuous across the mirror Mirror planes. Um, yeah, hope you like it. And as I said, the model's available for download, so you can pick through it. Might be better ways to do it. Um, that's all good. It's all learning. So yeah, AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson. Hope you enjoyed this. Please have a look at my other videos. Thank you. One more thing before I go. I thought I'd run the um, toaster through my zebra stripe room in my animation software just to see what the surface looks like with the zebra stripes so you can see it's all flowing pretty smoothly across the surface again thanks for watching andrew jackson aj design studio bye